Bill, what is the company's stand on this situation now? Well, at the moment, this is not a Southwestern Bell Telephone Company strike. This is a Western Electric strike. So in those locations throughout our Southwestern Territory that uh, Western Electric have uh, uh, men working, uh, you'll find most of them being picketed at this time. As early as 5 o'clock this morning, pickets appeared in front of the telephone company building here at 1116 Houston Street in Fort Worth. By 8 o'clock, levity was the order of the day as picketers joked with passers-by, newsmen, and each other. A predominant sign of progress in our nation is apparently the new fashion worn by the pickets. Gone are the hand-lettered signs decrying mass injustice. Instead, slogan-bearing t-shirts are in order and banners much the same used by the entrance in a beauty pageant. Stick-on badges are an integral part of the wardrobe today, as is the barefoot look and the hot pants. As the strike progresses, most of the levity will fade as the pickets get tired of walking around on the warm sidewalks, temperatures that will be well above the 100 degree mark. Judy Hanna's in Dallas. This is Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the move, Fort Worth. accomplishing those goals. Uh, at this time, we are making plans for future coordinated rallies, both in Dallas and in Fort Worth. We would join hands, the city of Dallas and the city of Fort Worth, and work together to get the mass of people out and demonstrate to our elected officials, both locally and in Washington, how the majority of the people feel and that we are against forced school busing in both cities. Now, <clears throat> we also feel and we worked out a resolution, a joint resolution between the Dallas and Fort Worth groups that each property owner purchases his home and assumes that his children will receive quality education in the area where he purchased his home. And this is our goal. Horses will be confined to their quarters for a two-week period after inoculation, but uh, we are unable to locate any vaccine to inoculate with. So you don't have any idea what you're going to do? No, I don't. What are you going to do about the people who came up here with you? Well, I guess I'm going to put them on buses and send them home for the most part of them, but somebody's going to have to stay here and tend the horses and feed them and water them, take care of them. You come from uh, Helotus, and I understand that uh, one of your neighbors lost a horse yesterday down there. Is there any chance that perhaps some of these animals could be infected? I wouldn't think so, uh, by virtue of the fact that you just don't take animals on this hard a ride unless they are well, but uh, I have no idea. I really don't know what the incubation period is on this particular bug, and uh, I, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that. I have no idea what mosquitoes are bitten them. <laughs> so the operation's fine, Jerry, thanks. Uh, had a lot of pain on Thursday and Friday, but apart from that, it went great. The staff at Baylor was fantastic with me. Uh, when did you get out of the hospital? I got out yesterday, and uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but not really, but uh, I wanted to come out and see the boys work out. Did the doctor tell you it would be okay the day after your operation to be conducting a clinic in a 100 degree heat? No, he just told me to look after myself, so I think I'm going to have myself here. Well, now, you didn't get to see the Washington game. What do you think went wrong with the ball club? Well, as, as far as I can gather from the boys, you know, they're terribly upset about getting beaten. And uh, they told me that Washington came to his role, which I'm sure it was. The way they were playing, you know, it was nil nil at half time. Then they, they got this quick goal. But I think I don't think we quite hit it off, you know. We've been working tremendously hard in training. Ron Newman and John Best have really been putting us through it, and the boys have been fantastic. 
But I, I think we missed Phil Spinney, to be perfectly honest. Do you think Phil's presence uh, next Sunday afternoon will play a great deal of difference in the game? Uh, I, I'm sure, I feel sure so. Phil is a, you know, makes his kick. He can play to ball anywhere. And I think he's a very fine player, as, as I do all the Tony Hill players. Do you expect you'll see action again before the season is through? Uh, I'm sure. I would like to think so. You know, I, I, my doctor seems to think it may take a bit longer, but my leg's pretty strong. And I think I'll be there. I, I sincerely hope so anyway. What kind of a game are you going to have to play against Washington Mayor Sunday afternoon? It's, it's going to be a tough game, there's no doubt. It's, uh, it's a very important game for both teams. Uh, we were very disappointed down here last weekend to lose. But of course they, they were more defensively inclined last weekend than they will be next weekend. So I'm, I'm looking for us to, to have a good game and uh, I think we can beat them. We're, we're quite good enough, we really are. And then the week after that you play a doubleheader, Atlanta there Friday and Montreal here Saturday, right? That's right, yes, yes. Of course Atlanta are so smarting from the 4-1 defeat we handed to them down here. They're always tough to beat, always tough, and particularly in, in Atlanta. But again, it's a, it's a game which we must win. We can win. If we play well, you know, we can beat any of these teams. And then the next day, Montreal, nothing more need be said about that game, should it? <laughs> <laughs> I think not. <laughs> it's, a, it's a game which uh, we're going to win there. Again, it's, we were very disgruntled. It's uh, one of two things that happened in the game up in Montreal. We're looking for, for revenge to win the game, win it well, and show them how soccer should be played, you know. Ma Bell is having serious problems today, and it looks as though things are going to get bigger before they get better. 3,400 members of the Communications Workers of America are picketing 32 locations in Dallas alone, and some 500,000 members across the nation are in a strike against Western Electric Company. A party atmosphere is prevailing on this first day of the strike at CWA Local 6215, and has since the picket lines went up before daylight this morning. John Agee, president of the local, explain the communications workers' position. Well, over the last three years since we negotiated a contract, we have lost $24 a week to the cost of the rise of the economy alone. We feel like we must gain this back first. And the pensions itself, we feel like the pension plan is totally inadequate. How do you proceed from here in the strike? Friday morning, the contract between Southwestern Bell and District 6 communication workers will expire at 12.01. Our plans are to put up pickets around every location in the city of Dallas. All of our people will honor these pickets. How long do you expect the strike to last? We know that it will last a minimum of three weeks after an offer is made by the company that's acceptable to International President Joe Burns. It takes three weeks to send out a contract, have the members look at it, return their vote, be counted, and come back to the job if it's accepted.
Dallas officials apparently have decided it's time to roll up their sleeves and go after water polluters. Monday's action by the city council, though, resulted in only a week's delay before polluters are going to go on notice. The delay was at the request of Councilman Fred Zeter, who apparently had information that polluters may be trying to work on their own to clean up their wastewater discharge. Staff members, though, have told Channel 8 News that water pollution will be cleaned up in the city. And they say this is only the first step in what may be a campaign to clean up water pollution to a considerable degree in Dallas. Our industrial people, we have a history of working with for improvement. But we actually have the power both to fine uh, those who violate the code and uh, if this continues to even discontinue services of water and sewage to the um, industry in question. You talk about discontinuance of water and sewage service. How effective is this to a company or an individual? <clears throat> well, it's a very serious action and one that we certainly don't want to take except as a last resort. But it uh, certainly can be a very effective way of stopping pollution. It so stops it and uh, creates quite an incentive to uh, improve the situation. Channel 8 reported in a documentary last summer that Dallas's water pollution crisis was bad and getting worse. Water Utilities Director Henry Grazier has now embarked on a multi-million dollar program that will dramatically improve Dallas's water treatment facilities. Now city lawyers are waiting also for the word to go ahead and prosecute water polluters. It may be significant that city councilmen, in the briefing session before their meeting Monday, gave city attorney Alex Bickley blanket approval to go after those polluters Bickley no longer requires a specific resolution from the council. It may be in time to save the Trinity. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the move. It's an extremely positive goal and will challenge this community. To make this, we will have to have a broader based campaign, which means including more people and more corporations into the campaign will have to be more intensive to make up the deficits caused by the uh, situation in the particular the defense industry. Now, those are the main minuses, and this is a very positive goal and will be a very strong challenge for the community to make, and one which we think we can make because we will tremendous support and interest of the people in the community to make this work to show that we do have a broad-based, active community and one in which we all ought to be proud to live. Now, as father and mayor combined, I have long believed that the place to determine something that is in the court is in that court, not in the streets, nor on the steps of City Hall. As mayor, the City Council has been strictly advised repeatedly by our own legal counsel, which, uh, of course, is the counsel that we hire, not to take a stand, and every councilman but one has chosen to take that advice. And uh, it has been pointed out that this is best for the school board itself, and school board members themselves have advised members of the city council that this is what they wish us to do. So I am absolutely confident still of my position on the overall matter. Other city officials, and you particularly as mayor, received some abuse from the steps of City Hall yesterday. What's your reaction to that? I don't mind the abuse at all. I think that's part of the job. I will be glad to listen to anyone who is courteous, and some have been and some have not been. Uh, that's part of the job, and uh, that doesn't bother me a bit. Do you feel that, that the city is losing by not taking a position since all the other local government or governmental units here have? I think we would had we not been strictly advised not to get involved. Now, the city councilmen, of course, are elected officials and are supposed to be responsive to public opinion. What effect is this going to have on them, do you think? None whatsoever, in my opinion.
the concerned citizens uh, about against forced school busing and the organization uh, in uh, Fort Worth called Citizens Against Busing uh, met here in Dallas today to coordinate our plans and efforts. We had Mr. Jim Lucas and Mr. Wayne Orr of Fort Worth, who will be heading up the Fort Worth organization to meet uh, with uh, myself and our organization uh, here in Dallas. Our common goal is to uh, retain the neighborhood school concept, and naturally we're against the forced busing concept. And our main interest is to maintain high quality education in all schools, both in Fort Worth and Dallas, regardless of color, creed, or placement of the schools. 